the name of the Lord this evening. Yes. Amen. Onya mese aye yi Onya mese aye yi Mumra yen tunyom yi e raza ye Onya mese aye yi Mumra yen tunyom yi e raza ye Onya mese aye Oh, onya mese aye yi Onya mese aye yi Mumra yen tunyom yi e raza ye Onya mese Aye, Mumra and Tunyo, ye rata, ye, Unya Messe, oh, Messe, Unya Messe, Aye, Unya Messe, Aye, Mumra and Tunyo, ye rata, ye, Unya Messe, Aye, Mumra and Tunyo, ye rata, ye. Onya mese aye, aboti ni nara be yi waye, aboti ni nara be yi waye. Oh, oyo nyam yo di mafo, oyo nyam yo kamafo. Hey, oyo nyam me yo kwantu refo pa, aboti ni nara be yi. Oyo nyam me, oyo nyam yo di mafo. Kind God, oh, I never see your type. Oh, this kind God, oh, blessed be your holy name. God, oh, I never see your type. Oh, this kind God, oh, this kind God, oh, blessed be. I 
will praise you, Jehovah. Two for seven, two for seven. I go praise you, I go praise you. Oh, two for seven, two for seven. Hey, I go praise you, Jehovah. Oh, two for seven. Hey, I go praise you, my Lord. Jehovah, hey. So good, Lord, you so good. Hey, Lord, you are kind, you are wonderful. Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent is thy name, excellent is thy name. Is thy power, excellent is thy power. Lord, you so good, Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are so good, Lord, you are so good, you are kind, Lord, you are kind, you are wonderful, Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord, sing excellent is your name, excellent is your name, is thy power, excellent is thy power, Lord, you are so good, Lord, you are wonderful, my God. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house, oh, in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, oh, in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, peace in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, join in the house of the Lord. Oh, joy in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, joy in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. Lift him up. Oh, lift him up. Come on, come on, lift him up. Oh, lift him up. Oh, lift him up. Oh, lift him 
Lift him up higher, say the Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up higher. Oh, my Lord is good. Our God is good. Everywhere we go, we will lift him up higher. Say the Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up. Oh, lift him up higher. Oh, lift him up higher. Oh, lift him up higher. Oh, lift him up. Come on, come on, lift him up higher, lift him up higher, lift him up higher, lift him up higher. He go to hell, hell your name, day by day, all the way, all the way. We go to hell, we go to hell, hell your name, hell your name.
Jesus, Calibra Savara de Levoske, Jesus, oh Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Come on, lift up your voice, begin to bless the name of the Lord. Appreciate the name of the Lord. Ateni masaba di brasevo bradi e kado. Ateni barra da duše de bradi esa. Ateni o kabande balusha na ata. Emero zebenda. Ezebeke no masadi breske. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Ye <laughs> We need to be calm. Oh yeah, my man, say, oh yeah, my man, yes, oh yeah, my man.
Anati Hallelujah Anati Hallelujah Jehovah Meliwo Oh Meliwo I just want you to lift up your hands with us tonight Being grateful unto the Lord Being grateful unto the Lord That he's preserved And he's kept us safe Are going and coming every day sleeping every night and waking up every morning it's not an automatic thing someone has deliberately taken that upon himself to make sure that we see every new day that we set out of the house and we come back it is a deliberate thing that God is doing Therefore, I want to bless his name and appreciate him. Knowing that he has taken time to preserve us and to protect us. In spite of our faults, he's decided to love us. In spite of our shortcomings, he's decided to keep his promise concerning our lives. The scripture says that what do you have that has not been given to you as a gift? What do you have that you did not receive from him? We want to thank the Lord tonight. Asidani na yewuti Jesus Me boten tim nyami Aye yi na ye yewuti Jesus Semi poo yesua, Mashra de Nina, Etimi wa yesua, Mewa de Nina, Mosombo Chenadi, Nina, Osronia Sassi, a forneo yesu, Osronia Sassi, a forneo yesu. Nancy, me oh, yes, me oh, yes, 
sua Meu Chapter 18, verse 41, the Bible says, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. He said, Lord, he said, that I may see. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It is not enough to hear the word of God without seeing its manifestation in our lives. It is not enough to hear the word of God without us experiencing its purpose and its relevance so we want to pray tonight that tonight father this is what i want that i may see i may see my life transformed i may see a change in my life i may see a lifting up i may see a difference I may see my prayers answered I may see my wishes come through in the name of the Lord Jesus I want you to lift up your hands with me say Lord Jesus tonight as I pray may you answer me with speed in the name of the Lord Jesus lift up your voice and begin to pray pray to the Lord that father that I may see that I may see 
that I may see, that I may see, I may see a new face of my life. I may see a new level. I may see a, I may see a new man. I may see, I may a, see man. a new woman. I may see a, new a new experience. A new experience. Another man. Another, man. Another, woman. Another woman. May I see. May I, see. May I, experience. May I experience another me. Another me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord tonight. Pray that the Lord will touch you. After Jesus touched this man, the things that he couldn't see from birth, he began to see them. You just want to lift up your voice and pray that tonight may I see my ministry. May I see my calling. May I experience your power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I welcome all of you on behalf of, our, of my father. Um, let's celebrate. Hallelujah. Oh, let's celebrate the gift of God. Amen. Amen. Bishop Dr. Jonathan Ekuban. Hallelujah. Amen. And our mother lady, Reverend Lillian Ekuban. Praise the Lord. And we thank God for giving them to us as our parents. Amen. In the Lord. Hallelujah. And it is very important that you have parents in the Lord. The Bible says that obey your parents in the Lord. Um, it is very specific. It is talking about those who have been your parents in the Lord. Amen. It says that obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Amen. And it goes ahead to say that so that your days on earth shall be what? Shall be long. Amen. So what it means is that it is very important to have parents that at least they can instruct you for you to obey, to extend or to prolong your life on earth. Hallelujah. And we thank God for giving us one of the best parents in this nation and beyond. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, we don't see them on TV, we don't see them on social media, hear them on radio doing gymnastics and concerts and joking and funny things. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. They are decent people. And they are following their call in humility. Amen. So we want to celebrate them once again. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. Kindly take your seat. Amen. So I want to say a very big thank you to our Father once again for the opportunity to share the word of God with His people tonight. Amen. When we read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Now the Bible talks of we being the workmanship. Hallelujah. We being God's workmanship. Praise the Lord. Oh, are you here? What is, when we say workmanship, what is workmanship? Workmanship is something effected or made or produced. Hello? It is the art or skill of a workman. Also the quality imparted to a thing. Amen. In the process of production. So, when the Bible says that for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship. We are the expression of his art. Hallelujah. We are the expression of how skillful God is. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you are the very expression of how good God is and how well or good a creator he is. It says that for we are his workmanship. 
We are the testimony of his skills. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So what it means is that what God has created has a purpose. And the purpose is good works. Good works. Somebody say good works. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear you. Somebody say good works. Thank you. So we have been created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So before we were born or created in Christ Jesus, God has ordained that we walk in good works. Before we were born, God had ordained that we walk in good works. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 to 7. I want to read the last part because of time. It says that, Glory and strength to Christ who loves us, who blood washed our sins from our lives, who made us a kingdom, priests for his father forevermore. So, it says that we have been made a kingdom priests for his father forevermore. We all know the work of a priest. We know the work of a pastor. We know the work of a preacher. The Bible says that for many saviors shall rise out of Zion. We know the work of a priest. The Bible says we have been made God is not thinking whether we should become priests or not. He's not now planning or deciding or contemplating. Hello, whether our sister Afiba qualifies to be a priest or not. Whether brother Seram qualifies to be a priest or not. He says that he has made us past tense. What it means is that when you look at the first, first scripture, it says that before, before, what it means is before we were born, like he said to Jeremiah, that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Hello? And I have ordained you to be what? To be what? A prophet. Wow. So before Jeremiah showed up in the mother's womb, before the mother realized that she was pregnant, God had already finished with him. God had already, or already, or God is already done with who Jeremiah should become. He said, I knew you. And indeed, when he was born, he was born Jeremiah. And he was a prophet. Amen. Amen. So, this is not the time where God is trying to see whether he can make you a priest. We have been made. Somebody say, I have been made. Some of us like already made. Than buying uh, 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 materials and going to give it to a tailor. And a typical Ghanaian tailor. He will say, come for it on Tuesday. And then you show up on Tuesday and the cloth, it has even not been cut. And then you saw, oh, you touched it, touched it, last, last, touched it, come. Touched it, by the time you come, he's cut it too. But it's that, it has not been joined. Amen. And because of this frustration, people, some prefer already made. Because it has already been what? Pieced together. So all you need to do is to wear it. And God is saying that we are already made priests. And a kingdom. Hallelujah. He is not deciding. It, it, this is not the time he's going to make a decision about us. So the first scripture makes it clear that. I mean we were created. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. That is um, uh, uh, Ephesians. Ephesians 2.10. Let's, let's go back to the Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. So therefore, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto, unto good works, 
which God had ordained, I mean, which God had before ordained that we should walk in before, before you were born. It has been settled. Wow. Somebody say, wow. Amen. So, I, I, the last time that I was privileged to preach, I shared on this. So, I will extend it a bit. Amen. Now, this is a mobile phone. And it has a creator. Or it has a maker. And according to, the, or by standard of production, when you finish any gadget or anything that you are producing, the gadget needs to be tested. Praise the Lord. These days, there are several mechanisms or machines or robots that are used to test them. There is no brand new car, no matter how many rubbers are around the car, that has not been tested before you had it or you bought it. Every car produced is tested. Amen? And the reason is because the company that produced the car has their name on the car or has their name on the product. If the product is bad, it destroys their name in the, in the, in, in, in the marketplaces. Amen? It means that when you look at um, products, people actually trust the brand or the name than the product, the actual product. There are people, once it is Samsung, they prefer it. Once it is an iPhone, they prefer it. That is why sometimes they buy iPhones that you can open the back and remove the battery. And when you turn it on, you hear Chinese music. Hallelujah. And you see that they've written Hun Chai or Chong Song. But you see, you were drawn to it because of the name, the brand. Praise the Lord. So, we, we must come to a certain understanding that we are like these products, like this mobile phone, carefully put together by someone, gave it a function. When he finished, he put it in a box and added a book to it. What is the purpose of the book? The book is stating to us what this mobile phone is capable of. Now, this is what we are. When God decided to create us and make us like this mobile phone, he added a book to us. And what is the book saying? The book is saying that we are his workmanship. Amen. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, if, if you buy this phone in a box, you will see this phone can make a call. This phone can connect you to the internet. This phone can do... The, 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 the manufacturer is not predicting and is not wishing what this phone can do. The manufacturer is telling you what this phone can do after it was tested. Praise the Lord. So when God is telling us or the scripture is telling us this, God is not suggesting. He's not now planning or thinking. He's making us aware of who we are irrespective of how, in quote, ignorant we are of that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to read um, John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, I chose you. And I gave you this work to go and produce fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. Praise the Lord. He says that you did not choose me, I chose you. And I gave you this work. What work are we talking about? The good works. I gave you this work to go and produce fruit. Fruit that will last. 
So the work is what? What is the work? Winning souls. Bringing people to God. Bringing people to Christ. Bringing people to church. That is the main work. All the other things is, 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 is just something around something. Jesus on earth, his main mission was to go to the cross. The healings were fantastic. Raising the dead, powerful. Walking on water, amazing. But he had one goal, to go to the cross. After healing the sick and walking on water, if he had failed going to the cross, he had failed the mission. So thank God for the various groups that we join in the church. Thank God for the powerful singing. Thank God for being behind the computers. Thank God for ushering people into church. Thank God for dancing for God. But there is one main mission. And the mission is winning souls. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor. Are you after the main mission? Ask, ask your neighbor again. Are you a soul winner? What was the answer? <laughs> what was the answer please? Hello? Are you a soul winner? Let's be honest with ourselves. Are we winning souls? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter 22, 8 to 14, the Bible says that, and he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready and the guests are invited aren't. Aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could. Good and bad alike. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Let's pause here. And go back to the verse 9. It says that now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. Verse 10. So the servant brought in everyone they could find. Good and bad. Praise the Lord. So we are expected to go out and bring everyone in. Good, what? And bad. Praise the Lord. Those who are smoking are invited. Those who are drinking are invited. Fornicators are welcome. Those who think they are also good people, they are also welcome. People who are already born again, but are not committed, they are welcome. Praise the Lord. It says that good and what? And bad were brought in. 11. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Twelve. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his, his aides, bind his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Fourteen. For many are called, but few are chosen. Hallelujah. So tonight, the title of my message is Many Are Called. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Many Are Called. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and, and look at your neighbor's face. Look eyeball to eyeball and tell your neighbor, I think you are called. Oh, are you telling them? Tell the neighbor that I think you are called. You may not believe it. But the Bible is asking me to tell you that you are called. That many are called. Hallelujah. If you believe you are called, clap your hands and celebrate the Lord. Amen. Now this parable is about how the kingdom of God is open to everyone, not only Jews. The guests, the Gentiles are you and I. But you see, this man who was not in proper outfit, who was bound and thrown out, 
represent those that have been brought in to the kingdom, into the church, yet have refused to fit in, have refused to wear the clothes that the congregation is wearing, has refused to go towards the vision and mission of the place, have refused to become a part of the body. He was wearing a different attire. And the man said, how come you are in a different attire? How come you are not loyal? How come you are a rebel? How come you, re you are rebutting everything that is being preached? How come you are so different? Bishop, he said, you are an oddity of a person. And one time I heard him use a phrase that you are a total departure <laughs> of, of who Christ is or of the person of Christ. Or you are a total departure of the principles, customs of this place. He says that how come you are so different? Do we not have a mission in this house? Do we not have a vision? What is our vision? Preaching Christ. What? Winning souls what? At all costs. Hello? How come we are different? How come we are not able to do it? He says that bundle him and throw him out. Wow. Are we here? We have been made for specific things. Winning souls. Praise the Lord. Now, it's interesting how in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus said, many are called. And in Matthew chapter 24, he said, the love of many shall grow cold. Many are called, yet in chapter 24, he said, the love of many, chapter 24, verse 12, says that for the love of many shall wax cold. And that is my point tonight. Where is our love for the Lord? I tell you, if we truly love the Lord, it will be easy for us to do many things for him. I mean, those of you who are falling in love and are married, just look at it carefully. The things you do for your spouse or your partner, which you will, you will never have done if they were not your partners. You would never have done if you were not in love with them. Never. What for? But you are doing it because you are in love. It may seem uncomfortable, yet we do it. Because of what? Love. So if we love the Lord, we will love his passion. And the passion of Christ is to see sons, daughters, united with the Father. Or reconnected to the Father. For this reason he came to die. For this reason he was crucified on the cross. Are you here with me? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 16, verse 15 to 16, it says that if the foot says, I am not part of the body because I am not a hand. Because I'm not a hand. That, that does not make it any less a part of the body. So, I want to explain this scripture in a bit. You see, the body of Christ has many, uh, let me say, parts. And every part has a duty. But I can tell you for sure that Christ is not only relying on one part to win souls. Because take the human body. Wouldn't you be shocked to see just one hand of a human being hopping on the road saying, receive Christ. I'm coming to hug you. One hand. It's a horror movie. Hello. Amen. So yes, in the church, 
then many parts of the body are supposed we are supposed to perform many functions but as a body and as a unit we must all be committed to winning souls so that is what i said earlier it is beautiful in the departments we serve but soul winning is a mandate of every part of the body amen amen it's a mandate putting the body together we are supposed to go because look at how it works if it is a physical body to step out to win a soul your legs must carry you in fact before then your mind must decide and your legs will carry you and your eyes will watch the way when you get there your mouth will speak if you have a flyer or anything your hands will hand it over so what it means is that we must all collectively come together to win souls. We should not say that soul winning is for the outreach team. Soul winning is for the pastors. We, are, we have all been called to win souls. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 5. He says that then the Lord gave me this message. Continue please. Oh, Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Continue. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. Continue. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then, then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. Hallelujah. So what the Bible is saying is that as much as we are blessed of the Lord, as much as we are, we are heirs to the throne of God. And we are entitled to many blessings as believers. The, the, this scripture is drawing our attention to one fact. That even though I said I will do this. I will build your life. I will beautify your life. I will make you a nation. I will put you in a family. I will make you a CEO. I'll make you a mother or a father of children. He says that even though I've said even though I've said that, if you refuse to obey me, I will not bless as I said I would. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Somebody say many are called. Say so many are called. You see, what I'm preaching is not a scare tactic. No. It is a reminder. It's a reminder that most of us, nature is reminding us, prophecy is reminding us, but we, we don't care. You see, when you see the volcanoes, volcano, and you see water, pour, uh, I mean, fire pouring out like water, that is how hell is going to be one day. When you, when, you, when you hear of the earthquakes, the Bible has prophesied these things. They are all reminders. The COVID, they are all reminders that we are not going to be on this earth forever. And Bishop has said time and time again that anything that has a manufacturing date has an expiry date. And one day we will all expire. I tell you, our dates are there. Whether we like it or not, the dates are set. Even if we beg God, we beg God that God add 15 years, add 20 years, 20 years never so. Even if we have to be 1,000 years, that 1,000 years is coming one day. There will be a time that none of us here will be seated here. But you see, the thing is, we will appear before God and we will be judged. On the many opportunities or countless opportunities 
that he's presented to us to win many to him that we failed to do so. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, it says that if these things be in you, it says that the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be. In, in, in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue, please. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. But those who fail to develop, those who fail to groom themselves or grow up in the things of God, to be able to preach the gospel to others, those who have continually remained babes and have not matured to the point of bringing others to Christ. The Bible says that those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. And many Christians are barren because, number one, they are blind to hell. We are blind to many of us these days. We don't even, when, we, when you scroll through messages and you see a message on hell, you skip it. We are not conscious of the reality of hell. And it is a real thing. I remember Bishop sharing a powerful testimony story with us. As, um, I think he's a man of God who had a dream or a vision and he met an old mate in hell. And he asked him, Charlie, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I, I died on Friday and then I ended up here. Only for him to wake up from that sleep, call the mother, checking up on this friend, and the mother said, haven't you heard? Your friend died last Friday in a car accident. This is a true story. This is a true story. There is hell and heaven. They are real. They are real. The same God, the same Bible, that's, or the same God who created you is the one who is telling you that heaven is real, hell is real. If heaven is real, hell is real. If God is real, Satan is real. Are we here? So we have neglected the work because we are blind to the reality of hell. And again, we are blind to the reality of heaven. Number three, because we are short-sighted, as the scripture said. And number four, we have forgotten. Can you put the verse nine on the screen again for me, please? We are forgotten. He says that, but those who refuse to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. We have forgotten who we were and where we were. We have forgotten how horrible we were. And God saved us. He sent someone to preach to us. But when it was our turn, or it is our turn to preach to someone, we folded our hands. We've forgotten who we were. We are all drowning. God sent someone to throw us a stick. We hold onto the stick with our left hand. Our right hand is free, yet we are not stretching to hold another person. It is a sign of selfishness and a sign of wickedness. Because many are perishing. I remember one time in Ashama, I went to the ghettos and I was preaching. In fact, I went to meet one guy. This was his posture. And he was asleep. He wasn't sitting on any chair. He was like this. And he was asleep. People are wasting. Satan is getting hold of many. 
But I believe tonight that after tonight's message, you will rise up and accept the call and go out there and win the loss. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe it and you will do it, celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll end shortly. I'll end briefly. There are many things that will happen when we die. And I'll just go through just two. When you die, you will either go to heaven or hell. The rich man in Lazarus' story ended up in hell. And the poor man ended up in heaven. If you go to heaven when you die, angels will come to escort and carry you away from this earth into the presence of God. Luke chapter 16 verse 22. So, as I end, we have said and we have claimed and we have professed that we love the Lord. How many of you love the Lord? Let me see your hands. All of us. Amen. We all love the Lord. But like I said the other time, love is always proven. It is not mere words. If you love someone, you love their passion. I remember Bishop telling his story how he has to go to the beach and position himself for mommy to sketch. A whole, <laughs> he would say himself, that me, a whole bishop, a whole bishop, he has, to, he, has to, he has to freeze for mommy to sketch. Praise the Lord. Because he is passionate or he, 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 he shares in the passion of the one he loves. And we also see how mommy supports his passion. Praise the Lord. I think it's a place to give a clap offering. Amen. It's a good place to clap for the Lord. So, if we say we love him, as I'm ending, in Genesis chapter 3, we see God putting a tree in the garden and telling Adam and Eve, you can eat every other tree but this. And the reason for that is so that love or the love Adam and Eve claim they have for the Lord will be proven. Praise the Lord. The tree there was so that Adam and Eve will, um, by their own choosing, love the Lord or obey the Lord. He didn't want robots because, you see, if, if there are no options, and the option you have is only one, how sure are we that the love is real? But where there are options... And you choose that I want you. Like, or I, like the way Bishop says, tells us. That when you are married, you are chosen to be married. Know that you've been favored. Know that it's a privilege. Because there were many others who could have been chosen. But from among the many, you were chosen. And that is the proof of love. And again, I say that love is not only the things we embrace. But the things we also reject. Because of your love for your wife, you will reject every side chick. Hello? Hey, oh, you will not reject. <laughs> Amen. For some people, because, I mean, for their, their love they have for NBC, if they see blue, red, white, what are you doing here with those colors? They reject MPP. And for others, because of their love for MPP, they don't want to see any umbrella. <laughs> they don't want to see any NDC face or colors because of the love they have for NPP or vice versa. So what it means is we must prove our love to the Lord. And what 
How do we do that? We must rise up and do what he expects of us. Praise the Lord. I am not out of words. I'm out of time. Shall we kindly rise to our feet? And let's celebrate the Lord one more time. Amen. The Bible encourages us not to be hearers only, but doers of what we hear. Someone said, knowledge is power. You hear it all the time, but knowledge is not power. Let me take it again. He said, knowledge is power. You hear it all the time, but knowledge is not power. It's only potential power. It only becomes power when we apply it and use it. Hallelujah. Knowledge becomes power when we apply and use it. So, we are praying in the name of the Lord Jesus. That whatever we've heard, whatever knowledge we have acquired tonight through the scriptures. That we will, we will apply it and use it. You want to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Just talk to the Lord. 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 Thank you for the word. Thank you for your 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 Jebede bede ke palala ko pasada bada bada rasa da bada 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 yandele le bo shada bada 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 ba ye falala bo shada da bada ba rese de bede 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 famiye ni ya upe me ya omo ja som fo o de omo ja na to me it's a prayer here i die for me anya ope for me anya ope me ya omo ja som fo in the name of the Lord Jesus we pray tonight that even as we've heard your word you will ignite us once again Jesus said that I thank you because I know that when I pray you hear me in John eleven forty one. and the spirit entered into me while he yet spoke and set me on my feet Ezekiel 2 2 we pray tonight that you set us again on our feet to be soul winners and people who are passionate for souls. People who are aggressively winning souls. Father, may these words that have been preached tonight fill our heart and fill our spirit. Because your word says in Romans 8 verse 6 that letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace may we enjoy peace because we have obeyed in jesus name amen somebody celebrate the lord amen 
Hallelujah. And I want us to honor the presence of our father, our bishop. Hallelujah. Amen. And our mother as well. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We want to take our offerings briefly. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you for these seeds. We sow them into your work in our lives. When a farmer sows corn, he reaps many more. As we are sowing money, may we reap many more as a church and as individuals. In Jesus' name, amen. You are God. You are not just big old. You are not just large old. You are a great God. You are God. Hey. You are God, hey, you are not just me, you are not just Lato, you are not just Lato. Yeah. 